manner much more than not because it is it is it is occurring in the definition but because it is closely linked to philosophy and for this we have to differentiate between knowledge and wisdom i would put this way knowledge is um something which is actual i know something and i remain within the boundary of knowledge when i know something and i know only that much but wisdom enables us to go beyond beyond the boundary for instance when i know i can say i know but in the case of wisdom i have to say i know that i do not know so when i reach the boundary of knowledge and then see what is beyond then i think we reach the realm of wisdom the the infinite possibilities that are there then we see not what we know but rather what we do not know i think that is wisdom we can also relate uh, wisdom or explain wisdom in some other uh, ways as well wisdom um i already said wisdom enables us to see enables us to be a seer seer not only of what is actually present but also possibilities possibilities are indefinite even the possibilities we can narrow down the possibilities to our actuality only i am able to see only those things which i have experienced that is lack of wisdom a, a wise person will be able to see possibilities even what in uh, which in which he is not expert so it is possible although i am not competent so acceptance of possibility is a sign of wisdom another point is uh, wisdom enables us to extend ourselves both to the past as well as to the future we normally we speak about memory and imagination but these days we speak about memory of the past and memory of the future as well we are able to extend ourselves when we know we limit ourselves to the present but when we are able to go back as far back and also correspondingly as far ahead to the future that is that calls for wisdom when i for in for instance it is easy to make an assessment about something that has taken place but the plan to organize something that needs wisdom that needs imagination so imagination i'll put along with wisdom because it is um it it calls for uh, not only just about what is actual but also about what is possible so in various respects uh, wisdom i find is very close very much related to uh, philosophy uh, rather than to an empirical science well uh, philosophy and immortality is another important uh, topic that we usually discuss in the curriculum and perhaps dr george could explain to us about uh, uh, philosophy and immortality thank you papa sagdeshis this is uh, another question that uh, often people ask when we go elsewhere on your journey or in the personal communication persons ask as yes, you are a philosopher can you tell us where there is a possibility of life after death whether i will survive and i think we, i was also reflecting it for a long time how to explain to ordinary people uh, how human is going to be immortal and i think there is a we can we be we can together reflect and see how it is possible say for instance we have number of ideas in us if we uh, put together all those ideas you know, we can write volumes and volumes of books where are they all stored go for a surgery and we will not find we will not be able to recover any of these ideas neither during life of a person nor after death and when where are they so that is something that remains inexplicable they are not material we are very sure they are not material if they were something material we could have measured nobody speaks about the length of one's ideas or the weight of one's ideas nobody speaks 
at the same time it is a common experience we all have ideas and these ideas if they are not material then they must be spiritual and only that which is material will be com- uh, be decomposed will decay and undergo uh, death and decay and that is that therefore if it does not undergo then that is your spiritual will really survive and these ideas also must survive but how do these ideas survive in us these ideas are always connected in some way by intellect will and memory in the three faculties that are there if these operations ideas judgment thinking or all these if they are spiritual then naturally as the faculties from which they proceed must also be the spiritual and if the ideas are spiritual the faculties are spiritual since there are three faculties in us intellect will and memory there must be a coordinating principle of all these three faculties and that's generally usually people understand as a atman or a generally or there are some languages indian language also they call it sanskrit atman or oh, also the soul the tradition the in the western mind sometimes calls it a soul or mind also generally as i say coordinating principle of it and that must be in that case that also cannot die because that is not something in itself it is not something material if it is not material it must survive it cannot die and that is an argument for immortality plato from plato onwards philosophers have thought about it and i also think that makes a sense there is an element very equal to soul or whatever it is there is an element in a human uh, that this way survives death survives physical uh, death therefore immortality is a possibility well uh, every subject or every discipline has methods and uh, philosophy is no exception perhaps uh, professor nandan could explain to us about uh, methods of uh, philosophy so that we also have an idea about what are these methods generally we can say that critical analysis is the method of philosophy but then to restrict ourselves to only one method like this amounts to taking sides with philosophers there are philosophers who developed different uh, notions there was opposition developed to i can say intellectualization of philosophy it happened in 20th century bergson is one among them uh, we can say pragmatists also are there Bergson for example believed that intuition is the method of philosophy and there are several methods phenomenology is another method but even when uh, this is the point even when you say that criticism is not the only method of philosophy you are criticizing criticism itself so even when a philosopher uh, opposes the view that criticism is the method of philosophy or critical analysis is the method of philosophy he is employing the same tool so without critical analysis there can be no philosophy that is the essence of philosophy that's how philosophy grows and is growing well uh, uh, let us go into more uh, serious aspects of the subject one of the courses under philosophy is uh, on metaphysics and here we have an expert dr george uh, pandamakel who is an expert on metaphysics and uh, uh, professor can you briefly tell us about the the concept of metaphysics and uh, uh, how metaphysics uh, becomes an important part of a uh, philosophy curriculum um, okay, thank you professor for the question metaphysics was the term metaphysics was actually a uh, coined by antonicus rhodes a greek thinker's disciple of aristotle 
around 70 AD. Aristotle, Aristotle was the one who really wrote the metaphysical principles and developed metaphysics, though he never called that subject metaphysics. And Aristotle defined metaphysics as an investigation into being as being, or a later you'd call it a science of being as being. Now, many people may find it difficult to understand what is meant by being as being. For instance, now the, this glass that or something that is before me, pen or a pencil, I see a thing there, I see another thing again I come across, uh, one after the other I come across things like that. But uh, suppose I pause for a little while and ask a question, what is this pen? Why is it a pen? Why not it be something else? Then I will be considering that pen as pen. I suppose I go and make a study and then later on develop that into a something of it can even like a little sciences are developed in that way. When we study something from all its aspects, sciences are developed. Then a thorough investigation is made into something, then a science is developed. Same way when we ask the question what this being is, then the science of being is developed. And that is what we understand as a, a metaphysics. This is a, the meaning of metaphysics. But little, little more to say, every one of us has the experience of being. How is that experience of being? Now, it, let me just still go back and ask a very fundamental question, or the most fundamental question. Descartes, Heidegger, they all asked fundamental questions. For example, Descartes asked, can, I, can a human know anything at all? Can I know anything at all?